Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with a fully blocked right ear. They have to attend at least twice a year to have this earwax removed. And we always remove it using a Jobson horn. Uh, a Jobson horn can also be called an ear caret. So there are different um, names and ear scoop, spoon as well. And the reason for that is because this patient suffers from quite debilitating tinnitus. So tinnitus is any sound, most typically a ringing or buzzing noise, but it can actually be any sound that originates either within your ears or inside your head. So it's not a sound that you're hearing from an external source. And patients with debilitating tinnitus, they you want to avoid, um, of course, making that worse, so exacerbating it. And sometimes by performing microsuction, because microsuction can be quite noisy at times, that can sometimes exacerbate tinnitus. And in addition, when you've got really debilitating tinnitus, you need to really try and avoid having your ears irrigated. In fact, um, it's possible that this patient's um, tinnitus was as a result of undergoing ear irrigation. Now, is um, so if so, a lot of patients who have earwax suffer from tinnitus because of the um, earwax. So I wouldn't say if a patient's got tinnitus that that's a contraindication to perform microsuction or, or if you if you offer ear irrigation. Um, but if someone's got a debilitating tinnitus uh, and they know and in the past they've either had their ears suctioned or irrigated and it's spiked tinnitus, then of course you want to try and avoid that. Now it was quite a challenging case, it always is, and it is for several reasons. First of all, it's the consistency of this wax. It's probably the, the probably the most annoying type of wax to correct. Um, so using uh, an ear correct or a Jobson horn. Um, so correcting this wax is quite difficult with, with this consistency of wax. And you've probably just seen why there. Because it's soft, glutinous, mushy, the, it almost spreads this wax like butter on a slice of toast. Um, you would prefer the wax to be a bit firmer, a bit drier. So when you extract it, it comes out in a large lump or large lumps if if um, um, not in a one single large piece. But this wax isn't going to play ball. It's really soft, glutinous, as you can see, um, and it's coating the canal wall and um, the ear canal. Because we're, we are, this wax is extending into the bony part of the ear canal, the uh, bony part of the ear canal in particular is very sensitive and if you make strong contact with the bony part of the ear canal it's not a pleasant experience for the patient so we're trying to remove the wax by hovering over the canal wall which we can't really see because of the wax as well and this is where your knowledge of ear anatomy and doing uh, you know, having the experience it really does help because you can somewhat judge and at where the canal wall is and at which points where you need to be super cautious uh, it's almost like that game of operation. We're trying to remove this wax without making direct contact with the ear canal. Now, just to um, uh, advise um, yourselves um, that there is going to be some wax remaining. You can say I'm saying that with hesitation because uh, when we leave some wax, sometimes we get some of the, uh, the kind of some really rude and nasty comments, and I even get emails sent to me. Oh, you've left a bit. You don't know what you're doing. Um, when it's, first of all, removing every little aspect of wax from the ear is not necessary. Remember, this is magnified. Uh, a bit of wax is good for us. Wax is there for a reason. That's why our body produces it. Wax, let me just talk about the benefits of earwax. So earwax is, um, it, it reduces the, 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 the pH of the ear, so it's slightly acidic. The average um, uh, pH level in the ear is between 5.7 um, so it's mildly acidic and the acidity helps to inhibit um, certain bacterial uh, growth and fungal fungal growth so it has antimicrobial benefits earwax earwax is also quite sticky um, and so it traps and captures any foreign particles of so dust dirt, pollen that may enter the ear from the external environment um, and earwax generally makes its uh, the majority of us, 90% of us, earwax naturally comes out. So the earwax helps to cleanse your ear. Earwax is also quite greasy, oily, it's full of fatty acids, lipids, and that helps to moisturize the skin. 
It helps the skin to maintain its natural internal moisture and it also helps external water from um, being absorbed by the skin, which can then lead to the maceration of the skin. So the skin cells can overhydrate and then swell and burst at the membranes. And um, it helps um, prevent um, the, the, the external water from further seeping into the dermis layer and leading to an infection. So earwax is there for a reason. Also, I should add, uh, earwax is a, a natural uh, insect repellent. The acidity helps to um, repel insects from crawling into the ears. Uh, although I have seen quite a few videos, um, I've never come across one myself yet uh, of insects managing to get into the ear. But if you look at those ears, they are actually uh, the reason potential cause for that is because those ears are they're, they're completely wax free, so it hasn't got its, uh, its natural defense mechanism. So earwax is good for us, um, and I just explained the benefits. So um, when you've got wax like this, you are going to see a bit of staining. And you can see I'm making quite a, a, I'm trying to really explain this uh, to, to everyone because I, I don't want to receive any nasty comments or emails, which I've got a feeling I might at the end of this when you this video. But um, anyway, that's uh, just to explain that there is going to be some wax remaining. Um, and I'm happy with that. Patient is really happy with that. Um, so let's go back to some of the other reasons why the procedure is complicated, other than the consistency of the wax, the sensitivity of the bony part of the ear canal, and the wax is all the way deep. Um, correcting, using mechanical uh, instruments is a lot more difficult uh, because you need a lot more fine motor control. I know a lot of specialist clinics that don't use mechanical instruments. It's purely either irrigation, so water, or uh, suction. Um, hence why I do see quite a, a lot of clients who travel to see me to have their ears um, uh, clean mechanically so there's no suction uh, obviously no water so i do see quite a few interesting cases uh, around the uk and also abroad um, they, they they come in spe specifically to have their ears cleaned out mechanically now we always advise on at the time of booking that it may not always be possible because if you've got um, liquid wax all over the eardrum well, you're not going to be able to clean that mechanically so we do give realistic expectations um, we do explain that i'll try my utmost best to, to remove the wax without using any suction and obviously if if it's not possible we won't just suction the ear we will explain to the patient that this is where we're at and we'll give them the allow them to make an informed decision about the next steps but um, thankfully I'm, I'm, I'm able to in most cases remove it if it's necessary just using a correct so uh, using a correct hook it is a bit more uh, tricky and um, a bit more uh, hand-eye coordination it's a bit more complex now this patient's got a really really narrow ear canal as well and you may have seen that as we're entering i would say the width of the ear canal is particularly laterally near the entrance is probably about 3.5 mil and the the jobs and horn that i'm using here the width of the, the the end section that is three mil so i've got 0.25 mil either side um, when the jobs and horn is horizontal at the moment it's vertical so there's very little wriggle room um, and you may have seen that I used a metal um, Jobson horn a moment ago, and that's because the metal one is a bit longer, so it gives me a bit more reach. Because this is quite deep, um, the, the carbon fibre one, which I'm using now, which is my preferred one, and the reason for that is if you do come in contact with the ear canal wall, it still might be a bit uncomfortable for the patient. And at the times the patient did find it not uncomfortable, that they did feel it a bit and they did flinch a bit, um, particularly when I was deep in the ear, and I was always checking to make sure they're okay. So I do prefer the carbon fiber, um, the lightweight polymer plastic, the ones that we're using, because if you do come in contact with the canal wall, they're going to be less traumatic than the surgical stainless steel one that I used as well. Now, you are, there are some um, jobs and horns and ear, ear hooks and rosin sets on the market, which is a very poor, um, cheap plastic um, resin. And they just, they're so bendy and flexible that even in a consistency of a while like this it will cause the Jobson horn or the ear hook to bend in the opposite direction and it, I just wouldn't use them and so if you imagine if you've got harder wax it, there isn't a chance um, that those instruments are going to ruin so I always make sure I use good quality instruments because it helps the procedure um, you can see the eardrum is fully visible um, and this is the bits that I'm referring to. The, the canal wall is smeared with this soft gluey glutinous wax and right at the beginning of the video uh, I made reference to the fact that with this type of wax it's almost like spreading 
uh, brotteur or chocolate spread on a slice of toast, wherever you like, a bit of jam as well, you can throw that in the mix. Or a bit of honey, because this wax actually uh, has a very similar consistency to honey, especially laterally near the entrance. So uh, the complications are that we want to avoid suction. Uh, it's on the bony part there. Kind of, it's fully, if, if this wax was just on the cartilaginous portion, then it's, it's still difficult, but the cartilage portion is less, it's more uh, robust. It's not as sensitive as the bony part of the ear canal. We can put a bit of pressure on there. Um, and it's the narrow, narrowness of the ear canal as well, which makes it just a bit more tricky. And also a bit bendy, uh, that's the other thing. So the ear canal is quite bendy. So we're having to, we're having to stretch the ear wide open. Um, using the endoscope to help keep the ear open. So I'm using it almost like a crowbar, which then allows me to enter with the Jobson horn. Now, I am in the process of developing my own range of um, ear corrects and ear hooks. Um, I think there's improvements that can be made um, in, in different ways, and not only the geometry, but um, other aspects of it. Um, I sh hopefully should be launching these in the not too distant future so do stay tuned and um, I think particularly the improvement I've made with the jobs on horn would really help with this particular case so right ear done eardrum lovely and healthy it's fully visible there's a bit of smearing around the side as I said it's not I'm not going to continue with that because it would be uncomfortable for the patient and it's not going to add any benefit um, this is just their left ear now the left ear um, there was a bit of wax, a bit of at the entrance, but nothing major. I just said, look, I'll just clean this up for you. I'm not going to charge them for this. Just whilst they're here, just mop this up very quickly. There was a bit on the posterior canal wall at the end. Again, we just left that, just mopping up the entrance. You can see how narrow this, this ear canal is as well. If I was to insert the Jobson horn horizontally, it would probably come in contact either side with the side walls of the canal. As you enter, the ear canal just protrude a bit wider. Um, this ear, there was not... It was, the patient didn't have any symptoms, but I always just clean it for them. Just a very quick clean near the entrance. And there's the eardrum. Now, that's all the wax from the right ear. You can see the different shades of brown. So the darker brown is older wax. It's oxidized. The lighter shade is more freshly secreted wax. And you can see the metal and the carbon fiber um, jobs on horn side by side. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.